Of the many toy-based battling games of my childhood, one brand always confused me. Most were easy to grasp. Pokemon, battling monsters. Beyblade, battling tops. Bakugan, battling balls. Yu-Gi-Oh, battling cards. I know Yu-Gi-Oh wasn't a toy game technically, but you're never gonna convince me that those cards weren't marketed like they were toys. And then came Beatemon, battling marble shooting, target hitting, block punching, chibi Gundams. They're weird, right? Right. But even though the brand didn't last in the West, pretty much everyone remembers Beatemon. Many of you probably had one of them, and perhaps, like me, had no clue what to do with them once you did have one. So the question I want to answer is not, what is Beatemon? But rather, why is Beatemon? Hi, I'm Jet Cuso, and to answer that question, I dove headfirst into Beatemon to solve my own personal decades long mystery. The history of the Beatemon toy line is weird, but the toy line itself has even more brilliant and weird and confusing twists, so if I can hold your attention to the end of the video, you're not gonna regret it. Let's take a look at everyone's favorite toy line Beatemon. <laughs> Before we talk about the little guys from Beatemon, let's talk about the little guys from this video's sponsor, Stumble Guys. An online multiplayer obstacle course game where only one Stumble Guy can get to the very end and win. I've been playing for a while now and I have gotten really, really good at the game. I pretty much always win my matches and I don't even know why they call it Stumble Guys, cause it, the game uh, seems pretty easy to uh, do for me. Look, you can see all the cool little stumblers that I've unlocked because I'm very good at the game and not because I am sponsored. I am actually very fond of the new smoke skin or wackier skins like the metal hatchling. We love casting spells. The designs are very cute and the variety makes it quite fun to try to win new stumblers, emotes, footsteps, or animations. Coming in February, you can actually invite all of your stumble guys friends into one party and go a stumbling together in a game. That's the official phrase they use. Go a, go a stumbling together. They want me to say that. I didn't make that up. And one last thing before we get back to the video, Stumble Guys has some very cool new maps that I have been having a lot of fun with. The rush hour map where you like jump over the roofs of cars to try to get to the end, and then a map created in partnership with the NFL to celebrate the Super Bowl L L V Super Bowl 57. I can get through this map pretty much every time because I'm good and I found the ideal path. But can you? Go check it out, see if you were any better at the game than I am. Just click the link in the description box to download and play Stumble Guys today. Be beat em on time, we're gonna talk about beat em on now. Ah, look at this little guy. That's cute. He shoots a little marvel out of his tummy. Pow! <laughs> I sure hope this concept stays pure and doesn't evolve into, oh God. Oh, that is so much. When I started my research, I thought this would all have started with like a normal marble launcher. Just some amorphous little shape that might shoot a marble, you know, to play the game marbles with. But no, the story actually begins with Bomberman. Bomberman is a video game series that prominently features the placing of improvised explosive devices to eliminate enemy personnel. And it looks fun as heck. Take that, you stupid little teardrop. Look at all these killable little- Games in the series have been infrequently imported to the West, but in Japan it was hugely successful and incredibly prolific. I offer this eight hour video about the franchise's history as proof of this claim. Great video, highly recommend it. I don't know exactly how the transition to toys began, but at some point, Takara Tomy began producing toys for the series that launched normal glass marbles. I guess it was the closest thing they could think to represent the bombs that the Bomberman uses when the Bomberman set up us the bomb. 
This toy line, named Bomberman Beatemon after the Japanese word for marble, was accompanied by a simple video game and eventually graduated into a full-on spin-off with 1995's Bomberman Beatemon Bakugaiden. That's the series that this toy comes from, and basically it's a Bomberman anime with Bomberman characters that shoot light beams from their belly marbles? Oh, no, we don't need to talk about that. Anyway, I should mention that sometimes the bombers in Baku Gaiden would get mech suits, which is weird, and a huge departure from any prior Bomberman media that I found, at least. But regardless, these marble guys are still supposed to be living characters, flesh and blood and marbles rather than toys. Things took a hard pivot in the other spin-off of the spin-off, Super Beatemon, which somehow started the exact same year as Baku Gaiden, which confuses me. But in Super Beatemon, gone are the bombers as characters. They're dead. They're plastic now. They are the property of children. It's a wild direction for the franchise. But now you can equip accessories and heckin' laser sights. Yeah! Why are the sick marble shooters still shaped like little men? Stop asking questions. In keeping with the mecha theme, and perhaps trying to yoink some attention from the Gundam fanbase, Super Beatemon figures, and basically all subsequent mecha-type Beatemon, were sold as buildable model kits. Simple snap-together kits, yes, but essentially, they're little Gunpla. There were an insane amount of upgrades to add, and a million ways to customize different figures. All this insane variety in what a beat -em on could be, and yet, to this day, I'm not sure what kids actually did with them. Shoot targets, I guess? Try not to hit the swords? <laughs> it's a far cry from toy games with detailed rules like Bakugan. It was essentially a make-something-up-yourself toy. It's shoot at a marble! Buy a more of plastic and I'm make it shoot at a marble better! Hey. It's fine to want a little bit of creativity out of your audience, but it feels like they were giving kids endless tools and endless upgrades to do nothing in particular with. Well, thankfully, now is where things get interesting, because this is where Battle beat -em on comes into play. Finally, some toys in a Jakuso video! Battle Beatemon is probably what most of you are the most familiar with, because the show and the toy line were imported and localized to the US relatively unchanged. Not that my audience is all US, but it, there, there's a skew. By my assessment, 2005's Battle Beatemon sought to fix the core problem of the toy line by adding more structured game modes and, more importantly, a way to directly battle your toys against each other. More on that shortly, but first, I want to talk about what a Beatemon toy actually is at this stage. Because a couple elements of the brand have never changed across its entire run. Little flexible prongs called hold parts keep a marble in place. A spring-loaded plunger called a trigger presses against the back of the marble, pushing it past the prongs, out of the barrel at high velocity, and into your friend's eye. Though they don't actually launch at high enough speeds to go that far, unlike what the gun-slinging, toy-smashing anime would have you believe. <laughs> That's what you get for being a nerd! Before this, previous beat -em on lines used many different part systems to let you construct and customize figures, and many of the systems and parts simply weren't compatible. But Battle beat -em on introduced the Zero System, where every component could be attached to one basic body style to both add aesthetics and change performance. Certain arms would squeeze the hold parts, great sentence. Different wings could be added to give more control, or barrels would help accuracy, or big magazines would increase capacity. Like people! 
In fact, just like humans, Zero System Beatamon all start with the same capacity for greatness, but material factors around us can greatly increase our likelihood of failure or success in ways that are mostly beyond our control. And of course, regardless of skill, you'll have the best chance at success if you start out with a lot of money. The more kitted out you can get your beat -em on, the better it'll perform at whatever challenge you face. Like beat -em on Assault, where you have to get as many of these gates flipped down in a sort of musical chairs fashion before time runs out. Or Hard Target, where precision is key, as you try to knock down targets through gaps in a barrier. Or Ultimate Strike, which is <coughs> bowling. All of these games were part of the 10 game tournament set, which gives you an insane sandbox of items to play with and games to compete in. And of course, the paperwork and packaging is sure to tell you all about the special accessories you should buy if you want to get an advantage in each challenge. Like the beat -a ball loader, which is a plastic bottle full of marbles that you can buy in the store. In fact, as a kid, I distinctly remember seeing the beat -a ball marble loaders on shelves in Toys R Us. And I wasn't into beat -em on then, but I kind of wanted to be, just so I could buy a plastic bottle full of marbles and make an absolute mess. Aside from that, I don't think the shelf presence of beat -em on was very strong. Since they were all model kits, the boxes are opaque with no way to see the toy. Funny enough, it's exactly the same as modern Beyblade, and basically all other modern Hasbro no plastic packages. I can very distinctly visualize a, a little American child getting a beat em on after seeing the anime and the commercials, opening the box, and seeing the sprues with utter horror. Poor little Timmy doesn't know how to build with sprues. Little Timmy doesn't have snippers. Little Timmy probably never even figured out how to build his beat em on and probably cried a lot. Don't you feel bad for him? The little fictional boy I made up? But anyway, to bring back the whole beat em on as a class conscious metaphor for humanity thing, there's only one way to completely level the playing field between two competitors of different economic standing. Direct, face-to-face -face combat. Elon Musk might have started out just fine with daddy's diamond mine money, but I'd like to see him beat me in a duel with beat em on. In my opinion, Battle Beatemon's greatest improvement over its previous iterations is the direct hit battle system. A head-to-head, -head, face to face battle, where each player's goal is to hit the barrel of the opponent, blocking their barrel and winning you the match. It's fast paced, it's chaotic, but it's simple and it's fair. He's getting ya! When you load a DHB set of armor onto a Zero System body, it essentially levels out the abilities of both Beatemon, setting the stage for a duel of pure skill where you are not able to attach any extra accessories or performance enhancements. There's the intense action battle gameplay that I want out of brands like these. Seriously, I have played so many games of DHB since I got these in the mail, and it is fun and intense every single time. It's as simple and easy to grasp as Beyblade, but it's a very different gameplay appeal at the same time. It feels like an Old West shootout, which is precisely what the Battle beat -em on anime display. The second best battle mode is probably beat -em on Invasion, where two players use their normal beat -em on to try to push this marble puck into each other's territory in a reverse tug of war. This is the game that the sheet recommended the bottle loaders for, and it makes sense why, because it takes a lot of hits to get this puck all the way across this huge arena. Invasion isn't as personal feeling as direct hit battles, but it's head to head and it adds the customization back into the equation. You know, if you're into that kind of rampant consumerism type gameplay, which I am. Shut up, go away! The DHB armor loaders are built in such a way as to slow down firing speed, because it actually takes quite some quick dexterity to reload while trying not to get hit while also trying to aim and hit your opponent. It's shockingly skill-based. Head-to-head action gameplay is the bread and butter of games like this, and Beatemon was trying to reach the same exact demographic as Beyblade. The final match is set for direct hit battle! Wanna be the man? Beat him on! Tournament set figures and loaders sold separately. Assembly required. Ask your parents to take you to Hasbro.com. Beyblade, just prior to this, had been massive, accounting for over 11% of Hasbro's toy sales in 2003. So the same brand of functional customizability and fast-paced action as the plastic generation of Beyblade 
was a must. It was the perfect phase of beat em on to finally export to Western audiences. But for some reason, Battle Beat em on flopped. But actually, Beyblade also died in 2005. What's this? Potential market trends? That means it's time for something really fun. And the reason everyone is watching this toy video. Stand with me, reading annual sales reports! In Hasbro's 2005 sales report, the decline of Beyblade sales was cited 13 times as a cause for weak overall toy profits, offset only by Star Wars Episode 3 toys. I assume everyone really needed to get their hands on the mid-explosion General Grievous toy or the dying from lightning Mace Windu. Beat em on is only mentioned once in the report, no more than a mention as something they introduced. Is any of this interesting? No, I just, I, I wanted to brag that I did research. My point is, I don't think beat em on was a big investment for Hasbro. With Beyblade on the way out and this new brand not clicking, it was probably really easy to just drop it and shrug and move on. But that's not the end of the story of beat em on. Like with many imports, the story continues in Japan, and just like before, beat em on continued to evolve and morph into something different, and perhaps something darker. In part two of this video, we'll talk about beat em on Crossfire and what happened when Hasbro gave beat em on another shot eight years later. The moment it's live, I'll link it everywhere, but do like and subscribe so you don't miss it. I also finally have some Patreon exclusive videos. I had to build a few beat em on kits for the B Reel for this video, so the full kit building videos with my live reactions are on Patreon now. Thank you if you were able to support, I super appreciate it. But all the same, this is Jet Kuso, and I'll see you next time. Huh. Huge shout out and thanks to my diamond patrons, Chell and Immortal Blank, my Titan patrons, Shivitis, Sierra 107, Kusano, Logan Hill, Big Chunk is 69, and new patrons, Razu Ryan, Pleco Pleco, and Roman Lewandowski. Thanks guys for joining the Patreon. Uh, and my hyper patrons, Gavin Greenlee, Bin Wong, Trouble, Dusk Anthro, Merrick, and Midorios. Uh, thank you guys so much for supporting. Hope you guys uh, enjoy some of the unboxing stuff. I think those videos are super chill, so have fun. Thanks for supporting. Bye bye